I'm headed to Nashville, Tennessee, home of country music legends and some of the best barbecue this side of the Mississippi, which leads me to one person, Terrence of Zilla's Pit Barbecue. It's been a busy day for him, but he saved some of his amazing brisket for your girl. Lines are legendary at Zilla's Pit, so I'm trying to time this to come right at closing. How's everything going, Miss Warren, when it's the one you um, show? Award winning. We know who's award winning. Who? No, right? no, 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 Wait a minute. It's just saying on the, on the, on the menu. I'm the people's champ. You are That's the me. people's champ. That's me. That's all I am, just the people's champ. It smells so good in here right now. I'm about to go crazy. Oh, uh, no. Nah, wait, wait till you get some of the best brisket out of the state of Texas. That's what I've been told anyway, so we're going to hook it up. Unbelievable. When he says sold out, like, he like, means Look, look, one piece of chicken. <laughs> We got a little bit of brisket left. We got war rations. Little, little uh, we got some mac and cheese, Woo! baked beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I said we are so out, <laughs> they heard it was slam Saturday, and we are so out. So I maybe got like 30 minutes max. It all depends on what people buy. No, he has two minutes because I'm about to place my order. Oh, Tour of your pit? What? Come on. It's <laughs> sold go. out. Uh, I ain't got much on it, but I got my baby girl, so... Uh, this is the Roller Kitchen, uh, aka what I call the uh, the cruise missile. Now here's the reason why I call it the cruise missile, cause it's mobile and I'm known to go from state to state, tear up your city, give you some good food, and you're like, man, I don't know what happened, but we gotta have them back. So, <laughs> all right, so front window, of course, we are. But I just want to stop for a minute because in order to get to this window. There's like lines of an hour plus just to touch this window right here. Yeah, and she <laughs> came at a good time. Actual work takes care in the back. Um, I named this smoker after my grandmother. A um, couple of months after she passed away, it was like I spent more time with my smoker than anything. And I used to, I was always a grandmama's boy. So I spent more time with grandmother and she's like, man, baby, just continue to do it. Don't worry about it. it it'll, it'll work itself out. Don't worry. Look, continue to do what you're supposed to do. Do it the right way. Don't worry about it. 300-gallon tank. Let me get the little fun. Spins it out. Oh. And what's her name? Marjorie. Slide out trays. Wow. These are huge. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So wow. now it's it's time to start cleaning. We got another which is, event tomorrow. Which is hours. How long does it take you to break down? Having a food truck, I mean you have to break down oh. after spending all day cooking. All day cooking, yes. Uh the breakdown process isn't really bad to be honest with you. Um I hit it with high pressure washer to break away all the grits and stuff like that. Uh canola oil to re-greasing and all that fun stuff. The thing is, it eats. It right. Eats. Even with gaskets, even with baffle plates and all that other fun stuff. If you're gonna do something in this magnitude, make sure you got a good fuel provider. I got a good local fuel provider. <laughs> he sees me every week and a half, two weeks. Wow. And I usually get about a quart. Wow. So I, I'm one of the few people that's in Tennessee that don't cook with oak, I mean, don't cook with hickory. I cook with oak and cherry wood. Okay, it's, and that's why it smells so beautiful right yeah. now. So cherry wood is all for my pork, my chicken, and my salmon. Uh, the oak is for my beef, beef links, and the other heartier meats. And usually I use the oak just for the BTUs, just because it provides a lot of heat. Question, yeah. we have first time, a first time person mm -hmm. using a pit, using mm -hmm. a stick burner. What's some of the advice you can give them about fire management and just learning how to control their pit? Uh, no pit is the same. If it, you can have the exact same pit, you can buy from the exact same store, no pit is ever the same. Uh, if I take it to your house and mine, it just may respond different to the elements. So you have to be patient more than anything else. Um, when it comes to fire management, I usually use my stack to kind of like work as far as like my temp. Okay. So to kind of like dial it back. And that way I'm not infusing like what they call a dirty smoke into your food where you have that bitter taste and stuff like that. Usually when you can control it by here and a good friend out of uh, 
Atlanta, Georgia taught me that. Brian Furman. Oh, I love Brian. Yeah, Brian's my guy, man. Be Brian is guy. so cool. So he taught me how to work the, uh, the smoke sack side and kind of be able to level it out and play with it. And be honest with you, don't cook unless you're like happy. Don't cook Ooh. for the, don't cook for the sole purpose of cooking, because it shows in the product you you're giving out. <laughs> My man T, right. I want to hear your barbecue yeah. story. All right, barbecue story. I'm gonna make it long, but I'm make it short. <laughs> <laughs> so I originally started cooking, God, 1995. Uh, the whole story was. My dad and my two uncles, they was big University of Tennessee fans. Everybody knows me, know this story, but if you don't know me, here's my story. Uh, at the age of 15, 16 years old, uh, they're like, hey, you know, it's around third quarter, we maybe had one or two too many. So you're in charge of cooking for the rest of the afternoon. And then at that point, we got food that people usually ate for like, if it's Saturday till Wednesday. So you pretty much fed people that lunch. Wow. So you can't burn up people food, you know, they're going to have for lunch for the rest of the week. <laughs> and we just basically just took our time. They came out, tutored me on what I should and shouldn't do, where I should place the meat on the grill, how to show me what indirect, which they call not hot, and <laughs> direct, hot side. So you and me grew up the same yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> so they just, they just taught me that. And then over the period of time, I just fell in love with it. I always liked to hang around my dad around the grill. He's a big guy and he, he could always cook. There was always a good memory behind him cooking. Every time he got on the grill, it was always something good. Something good. Um, before then, before the whole high school deal, I used to watch my uncles cook on the farm back in Brownsville, Tennessee. Ooh. Now, my family owns a 325 acre farm back home um native cotton farmers family history is amazing uh great great grandfather bought our land in 1881 for 771 dollars we always had a tight-knit family group no matter whether it was a cousin or auntie they all treated each other like brothers and sisters they always was together so the togetherness always brought food and a lot of the stuff they grew they had cattle, they had chicken, they had green beans, they had squash, watermelon, everything you can possibly want, they grew. And like, I had my great grandmother in the newspaper for like growing the largest Japanese green beans in the United States. So having green thumbs and having a aura around food, how we appreciated food. Food just wasn't something you just stuck in your mouth. It was something for nourishment. It was something, especially barbecue, because they worked in the fields. I got pictures of my great grandmother picking cotton. So when they went out and they came in and grabbed something to eat, they had to get something long enough to sustain them for long periods of time. Because they didn't know it. They worked up from tank to tank. I heard, um, I heard <laughs> Shannon Shark say tank to tank. When you can't see when you go up in the morning and you can't see when you go to bed at night. So they they pretty much lived out in the field. But when they did come in, you know, that's one of the times they was able to eat the pork ribs or the slabs because they knew there was something that was going to sustain them for a long period of time while they ate. They just worked outside, toiled, and earned everything that they had. Every, nothing was ever given, and that's kind of like the same work that they got had. Nothing's ever given. Everything is absolutely earned. Whether and his rent is due every day. So if you think you're like, oh man, I'm on top of the world, guess what? Tomorrow that same rent is due. So that's the reason why I get up, I go out, I hustle. Uh, even if you don't see the trailer moving, doesn't mean I'm not working. It's just all a matter of uh, me trying to honor my ancestors and saying, okay, I have a wonderful family tree. This is just my small brain. The way I view the food I cook, I'm not gonna cook something and serve something out my window that I'm not gonna give my grandmother. Ooh, I like that. And my grandmother was my biggest fan before she passed away. She had the Zillsby barbecue shirt. Oh. She had the hat. I got the picture with the shirt and the hat on. So she was my biggest fan and she was my biggest critic. But she pushed me. She made sure she like, hey, look, baby, it's gonna take time. Don't worry about your, your, your store. You got your trailer understand it's the journey not the destination 
I heard this and it goes a long way. You treat everyone with the same amount of kindness as if you would when you go see the Lord because you don't know who's the last person you'll ask for a drink of water before you go to see the Lord. I treat individuals like individuals. And people understand no matter what, they just want to be treated like they matter. And they do. When they come here, you matter. Because you can go anywhere else. Trust me, I live in Nashville. There are a ton <laughs> of barbecue places. And you just so happen to come here. It's appreciated. It truly is appreciated. I love that. And I love everything that you're doing here. And I think you are a testament to barbecue and spreading barbecue love. We try. We try. <laughs> Some people say we're succeeding, but we're trying. You are. As long as we continue.